Hello once again, this is Edgar of Tech Commander Repairs coming to you with another teardown. We're going to be tearing down a PS4 Slim. The tools are going to be needed is a Phillips 1 screwdriver, a Torx T8 driver, microfiber cloth, air duster or compressed air, toothbrush or a soft bristle brush, thermal paste, and 91 to 99% isopropyl alcohol. So we're starting here. I took off the hard drive cover. What you're going to do is you're going to stand it up on its nose and you're going to slide the hard drive cover over to the right. There's going to be a screw in there that has the PlayStation symbols. Just unscrew that with the Phillips one screwdriver and pull out the hard drive. Now you're going to lay it down. You're going to see the front portion of it that has the all the buttons. You're going to pull it up to pry off the top. Once the top is pried off, you're going to use the Torx T8 to remove the screws that are on top. Some of the systems have four torque screws, well, technically five. Some have two Phillips screws in it. I'm now gonna remove these two Phillips screws. Also mind, the PS4 Slim has a few different models in the center of this power supplier. Some of them is gonna be a Wi-Fi antenna. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it over. On the back in the middle, you're gonna see a black tape you're going to remove that tape to expose the T8 Torx screw. You're going to use your T8 driver to remove that. Then you can start prying from this corner to lift up that bottom plate. So you lift it up, slide it forward, and it should come off. If it's in here, you probably want to clear out any dust that's in there. We're now going to remove all the Phillips screws that are on top here. There's going to be three different types of screws. There's going to be short ones. There's going to be black ones that screw directly into metal. And there's going to be long silver ones that screw into plastic. Take your Phillips screw, mark off. The best bet is to mark off all the black screws with a marker so you know exactly where everything goes. The long ones, you want to mark those off if you want. And the short ones only go in the back by the Wi-Fi area and uh, the Ethernet. And then there's two that's over the hard drive caddy. Now we're going to unscrew all of these, sped it up. Now once you have them unscrewed, let's turn it over. We're going to remove the power supply. We're going to lift up from the edge, it's part of the metal, lift up that piece. You want to be careful here because you don't want to damage any of the cables behind it. Lift it and then fold it over and lay it on top. There's going to be a small cable on the right side. You're going to wiggle out that cable from the power supply and not from the board. Once that's taken out, put the power supply to the side. Flip it back over. I'm going to remove the Wi-Fi antenna. Just be very careful. You don't want to break this. Be very gentle with it. I'm going to remove that and put that to the side. Next, you're going to remove all the ribbon cables that are attached to the board. These only go in one place. They're pretty much folded, so it can only go in one direction. So just make sure you get those out the way. And we're going to lift up this top covering, this top shield, in order to expose the motherboard itself. I had one screw I didn't remove, one silver screw, got that out, but we're gonna remove this top case to expose the board. Now, once you remove that, you're gonna start seeing these black pads. These are the thermal pads. You wanna make sure you keep these or replace them with new thermal pads, but make sure you keep them because they're needed to go on top of the RAM chips. We're going to remove the clamp that holds down the board and supplies pressure to the APU. You're going to use the Phillips driver to remove these two black screws. Sometimes they might be black, sometimes they're silver. And they're going to remove the plate. You're going to unplug the power cable from the back of the board. This goes directly to the power supply for the five, for the five volt rail. You might need to use 
a tweezer or a, a pliers in order to get that out. I'm gonna remove the front cable for the fan. On some models, when you turn them over underneath the power supply, you're gonna see that it has two connectors or one connector for the Wi-Fi antenna. So be sure to look out for that. If it is there, you have to remove that before you pull the board out. Now we're gonna pull the board out, exposing the APU as we can see here with the dry thermal paste. There's gonna be a little clamp here that actually screws in. It's gonna have two holes that this little piece goes into. Make sure you keep that, put that aside. You're gonna clean up any dust, any old thermal paste. There are gonna be two thermal pads that are here, the pink ones. Keep those in place. So we're gonna remove this bottom shell. It's gonna be one more screw. Sometimes it's two, but it's usually one that's in the corner that's usually underneath the hard drive. I'm gonna remove that. I'm gonna flip it back over. When you flip it over, you're gonna see there's another screw. It's probably a Phillips head. Two Phillips head screws that are here. You remove those two, not the short, small one is gonna be in the top corner. The two long Phillips screws so that we can remove the bottom. Once the bottom is removed, we lift that out, make sure we don't pull any cables, and then we're gonna have the heat sink. Now that we have it out, we can clean up the heat sink. We use a brush, just to brush it all out, and then we're gonna use the air duster to blow out any little pieces out of there. We wanna make sure we clean up the bottom over here. Wipe down any loose dust that may be around to make sure it's clean. You can hit it with the air duster to blow it through the fins. So that's now we're going to remove the fin. There's going to be two Phillips screws here. Just lift out the fin. We're going to clean this out with a brush as well. And get off as much of the dust as you can possibly. Break up any of the thick pieces, then once that's cleared, you should go over it with the air duster or compressed air. Don't allow the fan to spin. If it spins too fast, it can damage the bearing inside. I'm going side to side so that the fan itself doesn't spin, blowing out anything else at the bottom. I'm gonna wipe out the cage that the fan was sitting in. If you wanted to remove your Blu-ray drive, there are four screws in the corner and then one by the power button. I'm gonna remove the disk drive. There's gonna be two Phillips screws in the back. There's gonna be two Phillips screws in the front and you'd have to remove one right by the antenna. Brush down all the crevices that you can see. Use your brush to go through it. Knock out as much dust as you can. Once you loosen that up, wipe it down, then blow it out with the air dust or compressed air. Then we're gonna insert our fan. It can only go one way. We're gonna lay that down, put it on top of the mounting holes. You'll see them there. Then we're gonna add our two Phillips screws. They're gonna be marked on the fan itself, but always remember, take pictures, remember where you took your screws out from. So one on the right side and one on the left side. We're gonna put our heat sink and bottom tray back in. First, we're gonna remove all these cables, make sure they're not stuck underneath. Be sure to get the fan cable in the front. We're gonna put the one Phillips screw in the back over by the hard drive side. We're gonna flip it over and we're gonna add our two long Phillips screws back to the top because this is what actually holds it together. Let's flip it back over. Now we're gonna focus on the motherboard itself. 
this board is pretty clean if anything you can always dust this down with your brush your rag just be very gentle with it we're going to clean off the apu we're going to get this old thermal paste off so we're going to wipe it down with the microfiber cloth a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on it then we're going to add a nice little line of thermal paste I'm using arctic mx4 Make sure all our thermal pads are in place. We're going to place the board back in, but first let's put this little screw. So the piece that I told you, first this piece goes back in. Remove all the cables and we lay the board in. Move all the cables out the way so we can line it up. We're going to add on the clamp for the APU. We're going to add the two Phillips screws, two black Phillips screws, or if you have big silver screws, they're completely different in size. The only two that are this size in the system. This cable goes to the power supply. We're going to plug that in. We're going to leave everything else unplugged. We're going to take our thermal pads and we're going to take them from the case. And we're going to put them on top of the RAM chips. It's going to be eight in total. So either you reuse the ones that you have as long as they're in good condition or you replace them with new ones. If you have any dust on here, make sure you wipe all that down. I'm going to make sure we get all our cables out the way. Those ribbon cables, blue ribbon cables go in between, go on top of this metal shield. They don't go underneath it. You got to make sure your Wi-Fi antenna also is on the top. Just lay that down. Everything should lay in its place. We start screwing in all the screws. If you marked off where all the black screws go, that'll be fine. Those go directly metal to metal. The silver ones go into plastic. And then there's going to be the short little ones that go two in the back go near the ethernet and wi-fi and then there's two that go by the hard drive now we're going to slide in our ribbon connectors there's only one that actually has a flip down mechanism on it so make sure that's up and then you pull it down to lock it you plug in the wi-fi antenna We're going to take our power supply with that same white connector to the right. We're going to plug in this cable here. It can only go one way. Plug it in, flip it over, and then lay it down inside. We're going to add our shield, and then we're going to screw in the T8 screws. One is short and one is long. And then there's a long one that goes into center. Now we're going to screw in our two long Phillips screws that go at the back of this power supply. Give it a final wipe down. Make sure we have it nice and clean. Flip it back over. This one screw that goes into the power supply itself from the bottom that just holds it in place. We're going to add our bottom cover on so we clean out any dust in here. Use your isopropyl alcohol if there's anything sticky. Use your air duster to blow out any dust and debris that may be in there as well. We're going to start by putting it onto the front. So where all the cables are in the front, the, the power button, the eject button, that's where we're going to start first. We're going to hook it. Pull it back towards us and then lay it down. It should fall right into place. 
We're gonna add our Torx TH security screw in the back. Then we're gonna take the top, clean this down with your rag, your, your microfiber cloth, isopropyl alcohol, dust it down with your air duster, use your brushes in the little fine spots that you need. And when you're looking at this, you're gonna start from the back. The Sony logo should be on the front of this top case, but you hook it from the back, slide it forward, and it's a drop in. Now we're gonna add our hard drive. Only going one way, you see a little hole for the screw, that'll be on the side. And we'll take our Phillips screw. It has the PlayStation logo on it, as far as the, the PlayStation button logo. It's a triangle, the box, the X, and the circle. And we screw that in, like I said, it's a Phillips screw. Then you take your hard drive cover, it just slides right on, put it on the back, slide it in, tap it over, and we're good to go. The system is now cleaned. So you've made it to the end of this PS4 teardown. Like, comment, subscribe. Keep following the channel. If there's anything you'd like to see, any other repair, leave it inside the comments below, and I'll be sure to get that back to you. See you in the next repair.